It is hard to believe Halloween, it's right around the corner. So many people wondering, is it even safe to go trick or treating this year? Before you buy your costume, whether you're an adult or the parent of a child, I'll share some tips on how it can be done safely. So how do you decide how you celebrate Halloween in the midst of a pandemic? What I recommend is that you think about four major elements, time, place, people, and space. So let's break them down, time. We know that COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 is spread via prolonged close contact. Prolonged time means 15 minutes or more. So if you're talking about going to a party, you know you're gonna be there for one, two, three hours, that is a high risk in terms of the element of time. Second element, place. Where will you be? Will you be indoors or outdoors? Yes, outdoors, definitely safer than indoors, but to be crystal clear, the virus can transmit in outdoor environments. So just because you're outside does not mean it's a license to attend a party with 50 people, 100 people, be close together, no masks, etc. The third element, people. How many people are at an event? To be clear, fewer people equals lower risk. That's just sheer dynamics of how this virus is spread. So if you're talking about getting together with one or two friends, that is lower risk to celebrate Halloween than going to an event or a party where there will be 50 or more people. And finally, space. How much space can be between you and the person next to you? The CDC recommends at least six feet. We do know that this virus can spread both via respiratory droplets that's in closer range and aerosolized or airborne particles that is longer range. So the farther apart you can be from the people around you, the better. Is it safe to go trick or treating? Guess what? There is no easy answer to that question. First of all, we are living in unprecedented times and therefore it's not as simple and straightforward as a yes, it's safe, no, it's not safe answer. We do know right now that the CDC is cautioning against traditional Halloween door-to-door -door trick or treating. However, that is always with any CDC recommendation subject to individualization. What that means is if you are living in an area where there is very low evidence of viral activity, there can potentially be modifications made so that children and possibly adults can enjoy some type of Halloween activity. So how can you lower the risk of traditional trick-or-treating? First, you have to know what the virus is doing in your neighborhood. If you are in a hot zone right now, now is probably not the right time to go traditional door-to-door -door trick or treating, even if it's outdoors. However, if you're in an area where there's relatively low viral activity, then here are some ways you can lower your risk going trick or treating. First of all, Halloween costume masks do not replace the need for a traditional cloth mask covering. So it's great if you wanna wear a traditional costume mask, but you need to wear the regular face covering underneath it. So make sure you can breathe and make sure you can see. How can you get your treats? The bottom line is you do wanna minimize touch points. Even though fomite transmission or surface contact spread is not the major route of transmission of SARS-CoV-2, meaning we don't really pick it up by our hands, hand hygiene is still important. So you do wanna minimize those touch points. How can you do that? Uh, if you're giving out the candy or treats, you can put them in little individualized baggies and you can put them at the end of your driveway or at the end of your steps so that they're easy for trick-or-treaters to get without getting too close either to your front door or to each other. Then people are thinking of other creative ways. The bottom line is the fewer the touch points, the cleaner your hands, the safer you will be.